Hello everyone, this is Baylor, and in this video we're going to take a look at emitting custom events inside of a view application. So I've created this app, it's, it's something that hopefully is boiled down enough that you can still see some view, uh, enough that you could learn how to apply this to your application. And so this app's really simple, as you can see it's just a list, or a list of Star Wars names, and with two or uh, this is repeated, but there's two main buttons here. We have something to reverse all the names, and we have individual buttons to reverse names on an individual basis. So this will give us something to subscribe to and actually see how to work with events inside of View. So as you can see from on the left side here, the HTML, this is a really simple application. There's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, the biggest thing here is that we have a list item that's looped. That's that's about it. We have our two buttons, as you can see. And as far as the JavaScript goes, it's also really simple here. We have our uh, re a reverse helper method, just so I don't type this out. And we have we're loading our Star Wars names from the Star Wars names package. So let's go ahead and actually implement the reversing of these names. And the way I want to do that is I want to extract out this list item here. I want to extract this out to its own component so that we can bind that state separate from the primary application. So what we'll do here is we'll create a script tag and the type here by default is application JavaScript and if we leave it like that it will actually job the browser will try to execute this so we need to give it something that the browser won't execute so we'll call it something like text and generally speaking, when you do a MIME type, you'll see that someone pre you'll prefix it with an X dash to just kind of imply this uh, a custom MIME type. And so we'll just call it template. And the, th the thing we want to do is we want to access this from the JavaScript. So we'll give it an ID on our page and we'll just call it our name. And I do that because I can type out R a lot faster than reverse a bull. And so inside of this template, we want to load, we want to move everything from our, our list item over here. So what I want to do is I want to actually use this rname template here. So we'll call that rname and we're going to move this for loop up to that. So we've, we've created this template and we've changed out our app to use it, but as you can see, nothing's rendered. And that's because we haven't registered this template with Vue. So we can do that by going back to our JavaScript, and we'll just say Vue.Component, and we'll call this our name, and that is the same name that we used here. And we'll just tell Vue to use this template from the our name at, uh, DOM element. As you can see, CodePen has this fancy thing where it's naming this view component CodePen. And so we need to actually pass in the name that we're using in this for loop. And so we'll just say that colon name equals the name. And we need to register this property with our component. So we'll just come into props and say that we have a name component. And now, what we're doing here, if, you, if you're not familiar with Vue, is we're extracting out the name, or we're iterating over each of the names to get a variable for that. We're passing it in, and this is saying that we don't want to pass in the hard-coded word name, but instead we want to actually pass in the value of that variable. And then we're registering that this is a property that we're consuming inside of this component. And so that's how we're actually getting this render, or these names rendered. So the next thing we want to do is make it so that when I click this button, that I trigger an event back up to the main app. The reason for that is because I don't want this reverse name to exist locally. I want it to exist, I, the data lives on this main app, so I want this name to be reversed inside the main app. And so what we'll do is we're going to bind a new event to this reverse button. So we'll just come in here and we'll say v dash on. And when we click this, we, we want to just admit that we reversed our name. 
And so we by calling emit reverse like this, that will allow us to register that here by saying v dash on colon reverse. And what I want to do is right now just console.log the name that we have. So if we open up our console, and we may have to clear it, when I start clicking this buttons, as you can see, what, what's happening here is we've registered that when we when we have a on, when we capture the reverse emit, ugh, the emitted reverse event, we want to console.log, and here we actually have access to this name variable. And so inside of this, as you can see, we're not actually doing anything special other than just saying call whatever view gave us. And so what we can do here as well is we can wrap this in parens and we can access the index of this as well. So now if we take a look at this, as you can see, we're getting back the indexes of these actual list items. And so what I want to do is just say reverse reverse name at index i. And so what's going to happen here is it's going to, tr view is going to try to call a method. So we need to register that. So we'll come to our view app. We're going to add a methods section and we'll call it reverse at index. And here what we're going to do is just say this.names equals names.map. And what I want to do is have the name and the index. So we'll just call this index. And we'll say if i equals our index, then we want to reverse the name. Otherwise, we just want to use the, register, the regular name. So we have our reverse name and index. And what we're doing is really simply, we pass in the index when we register this on reverse here. So now we're just saying that go through each of the names. And if the index, as we're iterating, is the same as this, then we want to reverse it. Otherwise, we keep it the same. And so now you can see that we're, we're able to reverse names on an individual basis. And now we can do the simple one, which I'll call it the simple one because this really is the more complicated one where we're registering this custom reverse event. Here, what we want to do is just say that when we click on this button, we want to just reverse all names. So we'll register a new method in our JavaScript for reverse all names. And then we'll say just this dot names equals this dot names dot map and we'll pass in our reverse function. And so now when we call when we click reverse all, you can see we reverse all the names and then we can come back and re irreverse them individually. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a comment and like the video. And if there's anything you'd like to see, please write it in the comment section. I love reading y'all's comments. Thank you and goodbye.